Hi everyone, it's Angelica here. Welcome to Journey to Belonging Challenge. I am super excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm hoping that everything was set up uh, correctly, that you can see me, that you can hear me well. I've just um, turned my volume up. Um, but thank you so much for joining again. It means a lot to me that you are here with me in this journey. Um, watching me and listening to my story and to all my learnings, I really feel deep in my heart that it's my mission now to share what I have learned in my uh, healing journey, my soul searching journey. Um, in the last, you know, it's going to be, or in actual fact, um, three years uh, this, this weekend. I never know exactly what date, but unfortunately falls into my daughter's uh, in between my daughter's and my um, son's birthday, uh, that day that I went to hospital uh, for, you know, and didn't know really what was happening. Uh, and I had uh, my emergency surgery um, to take my cancer out. So uh, it's been three years. Um, my daughter's birthday was on the 27th, uh, Saturday. And it always bring me emotions and the, and the thoughts around um, you know, that day, the day before that I was preparing for her birthday party. Um, so on Friday, I was um, preparing for her birthday party on Saturday. And I remembered, um, you know, that feeling of uh, three years ago where I was, you know, how my body was feeling, how I was feeling emotionally. Um, and it really makes me think that I have come such a long way. I have done so much healing. I have learned so much and I have grown so much as a person. And for that, I am really grateful for cancer and for my journey. But, you know, this challenge is really, um, it, was, it was really challenging for me to share, uh, you know, on my lives and to, to get people to come and join this, gr join this group. Because, you know, when you think about belonging, you know, we kind of, you know, we have a little feeling about what it is, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard to really uh, have a good thing about, like, how does that really impact our day-to-day -day life? You know, how does that really, um, you know, where do I really feel that I belong or that I don't belong? You know, and it's kind of really um, hard a concept to really talk to people about. And, you know, and feeling that you belong is kind of one of the most basic and prof profound desires that we all have. You know, think about, you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago when we had our tribe and we wanted to belong in that tribe, you know. Obviously now it's a little bit hard to, to think like that because, you know, we can move so freely around the world. We can do so many, um, you know, things that, you know, we couldn't do back then. You know, we could move, we can move to another country, we can... I, you know, start speaking another language like myself, you can, um, you know, remove yourself from whatever situation, you know, if that, you know, if you, if you, if you want to. So really finding and refining that feeling of belonging, I think it's really, really challenging and it was challenging for me to convey my message. So, you know, invite your friends if you feel that you, um, you have anybody that, um, are lost, you know, I think the only, the only, um, you know, the, a simple word, word to describe, you know, the feeling of not fitting in, the feeling of not uh, belonging is a feeling of feeling lost, you know, feeling that um, you really don't, you know, you lose a little bit of your bearings and and uh, your, even your purpose a bit because you don't, you don't feel like you you belong anywhere. You be you don't belong like you know within anywhere. So I think you know invite anybody that you you know has been maybe you know like a friend you know telling you you know I just feel a bit lost. I feel like um, you know a bit uh, down you know like about life. You know I don't know where I'm heading. I don't know why I am doing all of this for. You know I think that. You know that feeling of belonging affects all of us and you know and, and to be honest when I look back at my story you know if you had told me you know three years ago when I was diagnosed with cancer if you had asked me you know do you have any issues with belonging I mean I would have just told you no way like no you know like I'm totally fine you know I feel I belong you know I've, I've always had 
many friends, you know, everywhere I went, you know, when I left Brazil at 21, I moved to Spain, I made friends, I moved to Belgium, I made lifelong friends, I moved to England, I made lifelong friends, I moved to New Zealand, I made lifelong friends, I'm here in Australia, I made lifelong friends. So I have never been somebody who was physically lonely. You know, I have always made friends and been surrounded by people everywhere I went. So my a short answer to your question would have been no i do not have any any problems with a feeling um you know with belonging um and you know when i look back at my life you know like i in brazil and when i started really diving in deep uh into my story and how you know i had got into you know that reception room um you know 38 years old waiting for my chemotherapy treatment you know, I started really looking into my story and how did, you know, how did I go, you know, I always used to think to myself, how did I get here? Um, you know, I grew up with my family uh, in Brazil, my mom, dad and brother. Um, I had a huge extended, extended family on my mom's side. So, you know, lots of busy and parties and, and cousins and, you know, it was a very happy uh, childhood. Uh, my dad had a successful business with his family, so we had everything that we wanted. Um, and at home, you know, it was just me and my brother. And, and there was always this underlining kind of um, expectation and feeling that my brother uh, was uh, and could be treated differently than myself. So, and my mom was treated different than my dad in the sense of, you know, you guys are, you know, women and girls, we are boys and, and, and men, so we can do things like this and you guys need to do things like that. And, you know, my mother was a uh, um, staying at home mom, you know, as I said, my dad had a really successful business and up, you know, and she always, she was always busy. She has never been like this kind of lady of leisure, you know, lady that was doing her hair and nails. She was always there with us, um, you know, just being busy at home. And I remember at some point she had her own business inside my house. Like we had a big house and she had a, a very successful clothing business. My, clothing business. my mom is very good with her hands. Like she's, you know, can you can describe her as being like a tailor. And she had a successful business, but it was inside my house. and. And, and when I look back now, I grew up thinking my mom never worked, but she has always worked. But because it was inside of our house, it was under the, you know, the control of my dad and he could still keep her at home and he could still keep the control of her. And that whole scenario, that whole situation, I took out of one simple lesson. If you want to call the shots, you better earn your own money. That was as simple as that. For me, I saw that as, you know, although my dad was a provider and nothing ever missed in our house, I felt that when it came down to making decisions, he was the one that made the decisions. My mom couldn't make that decisions. And I, for me, was very clear because you don't want your money, you can't call the shots. So, and, and to be honest, you know, my mom wasn't the only one, you know, in that generation, that was all like that, you know, like uh, all my aunties and, you know, my friends, uh, most of my friends' moms, they were at home. Uh, so, you know, there wasn't an unique to my, my home and was, you know, there was again this underlining an expectation that girls and boys were treated different. So we would go to a, an extended family party, boys would be sitting down, and girls would be in the kitchen. And for me, kind of, I, I really looked at that as something that I didn't agree with. I didn't agree with, I didn't like it, and I didn't want to be that. Uh, I didn't want to be in that in that situation. And when I became a teenage, you know, then things were very clear around how girls needed to behave and how boys needed to behave. You know, especially girls, you know, you needed to be a good girl. A good girl meaning you could not have many boyfriends, you could not be, not, you know, go out and get drunk and do whatever you wanted. You just needed to really be a good girl. So hopefully you could get a boyfriend. So hopefully that boyfriend will ask you to marry him. And, you know, I saw this as, 
as kind of, you know, coming from a place of this desperation. Or as a girl, you needed to be desperate to, that somebody was going to come and ask you to marry. And you need to be so grateful for that. And I always thought and looked from the outside thinking, I do not want to be that. I do not want to do any of that. And, and I won't do any of that. And in my teenage years, I was a little wild, I must admit, but I was very much, um, you know, asking myself, like, is this it? Like, can I, you know, can I have another, can I create another path? But nobody around me created another path. You know, as a girl, you would stay in your mom and dad's house, you go to uni, hopefully you would have a boyfriend, you know, like I said already, and then they would, you know, after uni, they will ask you to marry him, and then you marry him, and then you live your mom's mom and dad's house and you go to your married house and then you have kids and that's it and for me it was like there must you know i used to think to myself there must be another way you know like but you know it's very hard for you to to know that there is another way if nobody around you is doing it any other way and when i used to voice my opinion around that my family used to look at me going uh you're just a rebel you're just crazy you know you would just like wrong you know like this is not how it goes you know why are you even questioning that and i remember a situation that was very very shocking for me and again you know like i didn't realize that all of those things influenced me until i started really digging deep into my story i remember going to this um uh, was my a family friend they were not like our family but uh, they were friends and they had three girls and one of the girls, she was in early 20s at university. She was dating this guy for years and years. And we went to their house and the guy had broken up with her. She was a beautiful girl. She was a very clever girl. And the whole family was crying. And I remember going in and, you know, the mom was crying, the daughter's crying, the sister is crying. I remember, like, observing this situation from the outside. And I remember, like... As soon as I got out, I said to my mom, it was just me and my mom that in that visit saying, what was that about? Like, why are they all crying? Like if somebody had died and mom said, oh, you don't understand. You know, he was a really good guy, you know, from a good family, meaning they had money, you know, like now she's broken up with him. What is she going to do? And I thought, well, she can find another boyfriend. And my mom said, no, but you don't understand, you know, you know, you were just like crazy and, you know, the life doesn't work like that, you know, like it's not that easy. And I was like, well, from what I'm standing, it's pretty easy. And I just, I was in disbelief. I was so angry on the inside and I just kind of knew that my mom wanted me to be that girl, right? Desperate for somebody to hopefully ask me to marry them and i was just like there is no way on earth i am going to be that girl you know i was really like angry about this whole situation around me and i just really didn't want to be that person so that instilled a feeling inside of me i never wanted to get married i never wanted to have kids i just want to carve my own path i just want to be my own person i just want to do something else other than this and because I didn't know what something else was, it was really hard for me to articulate what I wanted. You know, and to be honest, you know, when I look back, it wasn't that my family, uh, it was very encouraging the way that they allowed me to articulate what I wanted. You know, their vocabulary was very conservative, you know, like there was no space for talking about your ideas, you know, if they didn't fit in with everybody else, what everybody else was doing. And, you know, and for me, you know, it became apparent that I was not, I was just growing this feeling inside me, like I am not going to end up like this. You know, I am not going to be that girl. And, and that made me feel like, not that I didn't only belong in my own family, because obviously I wasn't fulfilling their, you know, what they believed that was uh, a correct, the correct thing to do, the right thing to do. I also didn't belong in my in my circle of friends, you know, in my in the society around me because all the girls were happy to do in that. You know, I had never met anybody that said, Oh, you know, like, you know, maybe we could go traveling, you know, together or you know, I don't wanna do this whole marrying thing for now, you know. I just wanna go and live by myself. I mean there was no talk around that. You know, I I just everybody around me they were just happy to just, you know, like 
you know, keep going with this, you know, with this path that was in front of them. This is it. This is the path. And this is what you've got to do. And for, and there was no space for anything other than that. And for me, because I wanted something different, and even though I didn't know what I wanted, you know, I really felt that I didn't belong. I felt that I didn't belong in Brazil. I didn't belong in my family. And on top of that, when I was about 15 years old, my dad had a massive uh, uh, fight with his family around the business. And uh, our whole life became that issue. And uh, my whole family life changed direction in the sense that, um, you know, our, in, our life in, in the four walls in our own house, it became hell on earth. Uh, my dad became very angry and resentful about that situation uh, because he had worked so hard to build that business and his family didn't want to have, didn't want to share any of, of, you know, the business with him. And there was a massive fight in court. And um, I remember having a feeling of going to my friend's house and feeling uh, how calm and normal everybody else's house was except mine and that again left me feeling i really didn't belong in my own family and that i didn't really agree with whatever was happening outside of me and the hardest thing was i couldn't control anything i was only 15 and that um issue kept going until i left brazil and beyond uh, but you know the most important is when i look back at my you know, and I embodied that girl living in my own house, I was deeply unhappy because I didn't feel like I fit in, in any of it. I just felt I was a stranger in my own family, in my own society, in my own house, and I didn't want to be that. You know, and I and what I didn't realize is that, you know, as a result of that, you know, I I thought that, you know, moving uh, geographically and physically, taking myself out of that place and putting myself somewhere else, that pain was just going to go away and, you know, I was just going to to feel like I fit in or that I belonged or that I was happy or, you know, whatever feeling other than whatever I was feeling there, right? And when I, I left Brazil and, you know, bear in mind that it was one of the hardest things that I did live in Brazil, you know, I left Brazil lost. You know, I left trying to find this sense of belonging somewhere else without actually knowing what I was looking for. You know, I didn't realize that not feeling that I that I didn't belong in my own family, my own culture impacted me massively on my sense of self-worth. Um, I didn't realize that as, as a result of that, I lived in constant pain. The need of to being independent you know, to prove to my family, not only my direct family, my immediate family, but my extended family and culture was wrong, pinned me down in this place of feeling pain. You know, I almost killed myself to prove that I could do it all by myself. I literally almost killed myself. You know, after my stage three um, bowel cancer diagnosis, I realized I had been feeling lonely my whole life. You know, to protect that feeling of needing to do it all by myself. You know, I never allowed my husband to, my husband in. You know, I have the best husband in the world. And I realized that I had put so many walls, you know, to make sure that I was 100% independent, that I was 100% like that I didn't need anyone, you know, that I didn't allow him in. You know, I was teaching my kids the same pattern, especially when I look at my girl. You know, I was teaching her the same path. And, you know, don't let anyone help you. Don't let anyone in. You know, you just need to push through and keep being strong. You know, by not dealing with my pain, you know, I kept hurting the people that I love the most, which is my husband and my kids. You know, that feeling of not belonging in my own culture, in my own family, you know, left me searching for something that I just couldn't even understand what it was. You know, I left me feeling lost and I didn't want to... And, and the thing is, like, I felt that that was going to go away by itself when I left Brazil, and it didn't, you know, and, and that feeling really lingered around, and I didn't even know that that was about belonging, you know, I was carrying this everywhere I went, you know, that physically, and like I said, I moved around, I went to Spain, I, live, I lived in Belgium, I lived in England, 
and you know and it wasn't that I was living by myself you know like I had many friends around me I have always had lots of people and I have always been you know an extrovert and you know invited to many things but you know it's still I was left with this feeling of not belonging and of and and this feeling of being lonely so guys you know this whole challenge is about journaling and meditation you know today we're going to finish our session with a meditation but i just wanted to talk to you about the importance of writing things down a researcher who studied trauma and writing for the last 40 years he found that men and women who write about their trauma heal profoundly faster than who don't and i'm not talking he didn't talk about men and women who wrote a book you know that he talked about men and women who wrote four or five times for 15 to 20 times 15 to 20 minutes you know at a time um, they had incredibly different physical and mental health outcomes from the trauma than people who didn't write about their trauma writing has an enormous power in our healing process you know we think that when we're going to write something that we're giving power to that story and sometimes we feel silly about it like why will i write about this stupid thing right why will i write about this silly part of my story but the crazy thing is that when you write something you give power to yourself you know and i think that is why it's important and i would love you, you know we're only going to spend four days together and i want you to Take this as an opportunity, this is a free challenge. All you've got to do is your homework. You know, spend five to 10 minutes writing down, you know, where in your story, in your childhood most likely, you know, because I really, I am a strong believer that our beliefs, our patterns, our issues come mostly from our childhood, even though we try to forget about it, we try to ignore it, you know, even though we, we try to run away from it. You know, it wasn't until I started digging deep, you know, in, in my story, especially as a child, that I, that I didn't understand really fully about myself and how I had arrived at the reception room in the hospital waiting for my cancer treatment at 38 years old. So I want you, you know, to write it down what part of your, you know, childhood, you know, or teenager years like that, you didn't feel that you belong. What, what was the story? You know, what was that moment that you felt like, you know, I just don't belong here. I don't, you know, it, it's, it's bigger than just like, I don't fit in. It's just like, I don't belong. This is against my nature. This is against of who I am. You know, like when I was in Brazil, everything around me, it was a lot more than fitting in. I have always fit in. I have always had friends. From the looking from the outside, like I said, I had never had problems fitting in at school, you know, teenagers, years, young adulthood, and even now. You know, so it's not about fitting in. It's, it's a lot deeper than that. It's about belonging, feeling a sense that you really are part of something. You know that you can be who you are in the midst of it all so i want you to go back up in that moment of your childhood that you felt that really deep sense that you were not part of something so now guys this is the homework i want you to write down and if you want to share in this group now bear in mind this is a is a is a closed group you know this is not this is not like the whole facebook is going to see this you know, I would love you to share. The people who share will get a 30 minutes free session with me so we can talk about whatever problem you have right now. So I want to encourage us to share our stories with each other. We are here, you are here not to learn only from me, but to learn, you know, in the same ways you're learning from me, I can learn from you. You know, for me, it has been healing to do all of these challenges because not only I say out loud, you know, and I uh, about my story, and I tell you about my story, but I really um, discover more things about myself as I speak, as I share my story. And you know, in some of the comments, you know, I realize, oh my God, you know, you know, people have felt, you know, similar things. They have been in similar situations. So whoever shares, 
day a story you'll get 33 minutes with me you know online where we can talk about whatever you're going through so now we're just going to do a meditation and i would love you guys just to sit in a comfortable position and you'll close your eyes and i want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth Make it a sound when you breathe in and out. One more time, breathing and out. Come back to your normal breath. I just want you to turn your attention to yourself, within yourself. Anchor yourself in a place really deep inside you. Just keep focusing as if your breath is anchoring you on the inhale taking the air all the way down to your belly, to your chest. And imagine yourself just really feeling the inside of your body, your soul. Connect to whatever place it helps you to really anchor your attention. If it's a physical or emotional or spiritual. Just focus and anchor yourself within you, within your body, within your mind, within yourself. Don't be scared. You are here in a safe place. I want you to start noticing the feeling in your body of feeling relaxed and feeling present. Right here, right now. If a thought comes to mind to ask you, am I doing this right? Just allow this thought to just to go and to pass as if this thought was a cloud or a bird. Just keep focusing on that place within you, on that feeling within you. And keep noticing how relaxed your body is and how present you are in this beautiful moment. Now I want you to imagine yourself under a flash of water, a waterfall. And this water is coming from the top of your head all the way down to your eyes and jaws, your neck and shoulders, your chest, your tummy, your hip your legs. This waterfall is making you even more relaxed, even more present, even more in your body, in your mind, in your soul.
Now I want you to visualize yourself as a child. In that moment that you felt you didn't belong. Maybe you don't know why, but you just felt it in your body that you didn't belong. Go back to that precise moment. You are safe here to go back there. You are safe to feel that in your body. You are safe to allow yourself to go back there. Now take a deep breath in. And feel in your body being and feeling that you did not belong. Allow the emotions to come to the surface. The emotions like sadness, anger, frustration, overwhelm, anxiety. Allow that emotion of wanting to escape from that moment but not knowing and not being able to do it. Keep taking deep breath in when you need it. And keep telling yourself and your body you are safe. Now I want you to tell that child, just look into that child's eyes and tell that child, I am taking you to a place where you belong. Take that child by the hand and I want you to walk that child through whatever, wherever, whenever you felt that you belonged. It could be as simple as when you are walking in nature, when you are being creative, when you are drawing, playing an instrument, listening to music, reading a book, Is that place where you feel like the time stopped and your heart and your body is filled with contentment? Just allow yourself to go there and take with you your inner child. Take a deep breath in and allow yourself to feel in your body of that beautiful moment when you felt, when you feel that you belong. Allow yourself to feel the joy, 
the love, the connection, the happiness, the contentment. It's just you and your inner child. You are together as one. And within your energy, you feel you belong. You belong in this place where only you know, where only you feel this deep sense of belonging. Allow the emotions to come through, to come to the surface of joy, of feeling empowered by this beautiful sense of belonging, of happiness, a feeling that you don't have to prove who you are. You can be who you truly are. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. I want you to take a picture of this moment. Take a picture of this moment where you belong. Now I want you to tell your body, I belong here. Allow these words to sink in all the way down to your cells. And take another deep breath in and a deep breath out. Now I want you to tell your inner child, you now know where you belong. You can let your inner child go now. But you know that you and your inner child can always meet in this place again, over and over, whenever you want whenever you need. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Slowly come back to your environment. Bring your both hands to your heart. Namaste. Guys, that was, um, I felt it was beautiful. I would love to hear what you guys felt, um, what your thoughts are. But like I said, the most important thing, I really want you to sit down, take you five minutes and write it down where in your childhood you felt like you didn't belong. 
go back to that place. You know, sometimes it, it will require you to ask some questions because when you go back, sometimes it, it was only a feeling, but you didn't know what made you feel like that. But I guarantee you that when you go back to the, that place, you're going to understand a bit more about yourself. You're going to understand a bit more about this, you know, elusive kind of sense of belonging, but that how real this can be in our day-to-day -day life, in our adulthood now. Like I said, if you want to share your comments, your experience, uh, your story, you'll get 30 minutes for free with me so we can talk about your problems. So I'd love you to either write a post or do a video, a live video, uh, and so we can all learn from each other. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys tomorrow. Share this with any friends that you believe that need to be here, need to, to listen to this message. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.